Here's the list. Attitude diseases. Number one is indifference. The shrug of the shoulder. The guy's not even concerned. He's just drifting. This is called the mild approach to life. A disease known as mildness. The guy says, well, I can't see getting all that worked up. Well, to be any kind of winner, you got to get worked up. There's one problem with drift. You cannot drift to the top of the mountain. And the good Lord said in the closing chapters of the Bible, here's the best way to live, one way or the other. That's best. Hot or what's next best? Cold is next best to hot. Not the half-baked middle, lukewarm, not too hot, not too cold. What a sad way to live. I think what it means is pick a direction and go with everything you got. Just pick one and go. Somebody says, yeah, but what if it's the wrong direction? You'll find out quicker. <laughs> it won't take you 25 years to wake up and say, oh no, I've been walking the wrong road. I told my staff the other day, next best to prosperity is adversity. If one doesn't get you, pray for the other. We all do better from one of two reasons, inspiration or desperation. And I don't wish anything bad on you tonight, but if you're not inspired, I hope a wagon comes down your rut. Whatever it takes to get you to try harder, read more, set your goals and go for it. Somebody asked me one time, what quality would I pick if I wanted to work with somebody? And you know what I picked first, number one, strong feet. Please, number one, give me somebody that feels strong about most anything. I don't even care, just so they believe it. Even if they disagree with me. Wonderful. Just so they disagree vigorously. I'm not saying it's easy to win those kind of people to your point of view, but I'd rather do that than to try to resurrect people from the dead. Pump them up every month, pump them up, pump them up. Here's the key to the good life. Learn to put everything you've got into everything you do. Whatever you are doing, pour it on. It will quickly open up into opportunity or quickly di disclose to you that you ought to be doing something else. The delusion is, if I had a better job, I'd really pour it on. See, that's delusion. Wherever you are, pour it on. Don't give somebody half a job for a day's pour it on. See, that'll help change your mind. Get rid of this disease. Here's the next attitude disease, indecision. Mental paralysis. The guy can't make up his mind and it becomes a disease. Pretty soon he knows he's got it. The guy says, well, I know I'm on the fence. But he says, what if I get off on the wrong side? Listen, after a while it doesn't matter. Just get off. Any side will do. A life full of adventure is a life full of many decisions. The ones that turn out to be wrong give you better experience to make better decisions. So don't see how many decisions you can get out of, see how many you can get into. That's where the adventure is. So shake off this disease in decision. In areas of choice, you need to work on your weaknesses. For example, let's say I let's say I am I'm lazy. That's an area of choice. That's I mean I I'm not naturally lazy, I'm just lazy. It's mm -hmm. a choice. So I, I need to work on that because I, mm. in areas of choices, you can make vast improvement and you can make fast improvement. I've never heard this distinction, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems helpful. Oh yeah, in choices. So yeah. the attitude. Let's say I have a lousy attitude. One day I wake up, I say, this isn't getting me anywhere. I gotta have a good attitude. You can go from a zero to a ten. I mean, almost. almost I mean, you see people that you say, my gosh, overnight they just yeah. got good and happy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it's a choice. Vast, fast growth in choices. In giftedness, DNA, wiring, your growth is very, very small. And it's very slow. So I think, for example, a person can maybe increase their giftedness skill set, maybe two numbers. Wow. So if I'm a, if I'm a little bit above average, I'm a six. If I really work hard, I can become an eight. But but an eight is is powerful. Yeah, eight has a huge return. So what I tell people is in in areas of giftedness, that's where you have to work on your strengths. If if I'm a two in something, I'm very weak in a skill. If I worked hard, I could only become a four. It's still be the lab. So what I tell people is, you got to ask yourself, is it going to give me the return? So in the area of strengths, you got to pour yourself into the things that you're already good at because that'll really set you apart from average. Yeah. 
but in areas of choice. Go for those weaknesses. Because you're not, don't you know people that are highly skilled, but they have a lousy attitude or they're not self, they're not self-disciplined. And they're never going to, they're never going to, they're never going to get anywhere. And they're not going to get anywhere because they didn't. So in areas of choices, work on your weaknesses, but in areas of strengths and skills, just work on your strengths. I tell the young people, I say to you right now, stop looking for employment. Why don't you position yourself differently and look for deep work? To employers, to be employed means that somebody else is benefiting from your energy. To deploy me, to, de to deploy yourself means that you are using your own energy to be productive. So instead of waiting for someone to give you a job, do a job at work. That's why I tell people there's difference between your work and your job. Your job is what they train you to do. Your work is what you were born to do. Your job is your skill, which they can fire you from any time. But your work is your gift, no other can ever. Your job is where you get compensation for activity. Your work is where you get fulfillment because you love it so much. Your job you can retire from. Your work you can never retire from because your work is you. So when a person discovers their work, they, they no longer need a job because their, their work makes them productive. So there are young people in this country who are full of talents, full of kids. And I want to say this to you. Every problem in life is a business. All businesses are simply someone solving a problem. So the more problems that are in Kenya, the more businesses available for young people to begin. And this is what I think we are lacking. We are trained to get a job. We are not trained to start a business. We are trained to let other people employ us, not trained to deploy ourselves. When we talk about living our quest, <clears throat> um, I, I think that living my quest, really, if I look at it on a daily basis, it's finding my own voice. It's finding your voice. It's finding the song that only you can sing off key or not it's finding your rhythm it's discovering what it feels like to walk in your shoes today it won't look like it looked 10 years ago living your quest is what can I do with my life so that my life becomes infectious to someone else living my quest looks like how do I make my fingerprint matter so big that it lives beyond my transition day. Living your quest is how can I forgive the perceivingly unforgivable so I can love the absolute lovable. Living your quest is how do I give myself a thousand second chances and every time I get to 999 press reset. Yeah? Yeah! Living my quest is, is not some ambiguous, untouchable experience. Living my quest means going back and healing the little girl in me so that the woman can be free. It's going back and embracing the little boy in you so that the man can show up and give himself permission to cry when necessary. Living your quest is not something that you can't touch. It's not something that requires a stage or lights or cameras. Living your quest is being complete and content with who you are in the dark of the night. So who you are in the middle of the day is all right. Living your quest is as simple as it is complex. Living your quest is about giving yourself permission, say permission, on a daily basis to become the next best version of yourself. Living your quest is not holding yourself hostage to old decisions, not holding yourself hostage to shame, blame, guilt, regret, and anger. Living your quest is about recognizing that every day I can be reborn to my possibility. See, living your quest is as internal and personal as it is public.